I went there. I was like, is this place really halal? It's called Dave's, you know, Dave's hot chicken. I'm like, I've never had hot chicken before in my life. I go there and, just, and I see the halal certificate and everything. I'm like, I try and it blows my mind. Like, I it's like, I can't I'm like, wow, this is crazy good. The Halal Food Podcast by Halal Run, the number one guide to halal eating options in the US, Canada and the UK. On our podcast, we feature inspiring and accomplished Muslims in the West from all backgrounds. We talk to them about their lives and about the halal places where they love to eat. Today's episode features Saad, a food blogger and professional photographer based in Southern California. He blogs on Instagram under the handle Halal California. As I mentioned, he's a professional photographer, so he shares advice with us on how to do great food photography and to improve your Instagram pages, in addition to giving us amazing recommendations of halal places to try out in the LA and beyond Southern California area. So let's jump over to the conversation. And we're here today uh, live with Saad. Uh, Saad, thank you for joining us. Asalaamu Alaikum. Like us a lot. How you doing? Awesome. And it's it's great to have you. You are our first guest on the podcast from California. Oh wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. So uh so I guess welcome and congratulations. Oh uh, yeah, thank uh, you. <laughs> so Sad, let's let's jump right into it. How did you get into halal food blogging? Okay, so uh right when like I, I'm actually a food photographer for as a job. Like, uh, I work in food photography, um, and, uh, I kind of shoot for like DoorDash, Postmates, Chow Now, and like my own kind of thing on the side as well. You know, I just go to different restaurants and shoot like just independently. Uh, so I always liked enjoying shooting food. I like, I've always been about food. And so, uh, I, right around like when, right before the pandemic hit, I was thinking about doing a blog, you know, like an Instagram where I can post pictures and kind of share like, you know, a lot of food in Southern California. And then that pandemic came and I was like, maybe I should wait. And then it kept going. And I was like, I can't wait a few hours. I just jumped in. I was like, okay, let's just do it. Let's just start going. Uh, and it just kind of blew up from there, I guess, because a lot of people were home through the pandemic. They are looking for food options, food stuff. And I guess my page just kind of hit and, it kind of started growing from there, really. Well, look, it's not a surprise to me, Saad. I did not know this until just now, but it's not a surprise to me that you told me right now you're like a professional food photographer because that's one thing that we've noticed about your blog, right? The photography is amazing. Um, what what advice, you know, everyone is a food photographer these days, not a professional one like yourself, but like we're all taking pictures of all our meals. So, so um what ad, what kind of advice or tips do you give people when they ask you, oh, how do I do better food photography? So I use a, a lot of people just use their phone, right? Uh, the newest iPhone or new Android phone or something. I use my camera, the Canon 5D Mark III. It's a little, getting a little old now. It's getting to show its age a little bit. But for like what I do, it's for the most part pretty good. Uh, so I think the quality of the photos of that definitely stand out. For reals, for when it comes to food photography, it's not really about like the quality, really. It's like literally mostly just about making the food look pretty and look appetizing. Uh, natural light, I always feel is really nice. A lot of people will go to a restaurant, it's dark, you know, there's it's a grainy photo, and they don't really think about, you know, how that's going to look. So when they take it on the phone, it's like kind of grainy and messy, and it kind of looks a little not great. Or they like don't plate it properly. They just kind of, this is my food. This is how it is. Like, you know, Think about how it is if it's like a chef was to bring out something, you know, Cause a lot of times, especially even when I go to like a restaurant to shoot in my regular photography, like they'll just give me the food. And I'm like, okay, I got to recreate this kind of thing, like rebuild this a little bit, make it a little prettier. Uh, and the whole thing is you try to make it look as pretty as possible. I like these like nice soft light, natural light, sit by, sit by a window, something nice, bright, colorful. I feel like that really helps sell the food and makes it look pretty because I mean, you know, you go on like Yelp and stuff and you see people's like photos from like uh, they visit a place they take with their phone. It's like napkins, like crumpled up napkins and like happy and food. And I'm like, nobody wants to see that. That's kind of I know you're enjoying it, but it's like, uh, I don't know. So that's like my point is like, you know, think about it as like an, almost like a beauty shop, but for food. That's fair. Uh, and that's very helpful, actually. So well, let me let me on a similar note. 
you know, you have like a lot of Instagram bloggers these days, um, you have food photography, but you also have videos, right? So how do you approach your videos uh, any differently than you than you approach your photos in terms of like your technique or yeah for for the videos I use my phone I do use my phone uh just because my camera is it's older camera so it's like 1080 but like you know my phone's like 4K uh and I always feel like I think I'm, I think my videography on my food has actually evolved especially with this vlog like I used to shoot like uh, I used to shoot and I used to throw filters on it and stuff like that I was like no forget all that I. I shoot it like the highest resolution plus like 4K, 60 frames, so it's nice and crisp. High shutter, so it's really crisp and clean. Nice bright, natural, very similar to like the food kind of nice bright, night bright, bright like natural light location kind of either outside in the shade or like near a window. And uh, I just put my phone. I usually hold my phone, or I have like a little like uh, what do you call them stabilizer, the little stabilizer. But I don't really use it for the food because it's so small. And the movements are so incremental uh but i i sometimes use that too and i just kind of like you know like do like sweeping shots of the food and everything like that close up zooms in zooms out i try to get like a nice little uh for stuff for like reels you know when you like shoot reels i like to do like clean intros and outros kind of something like you know panning off of something or panning from the sky down or from a plant or something like you know like something to kind of add a little creative flair and then now with like, you know, reels and stuff, you can do like little zoom in and fade things, kind of cross cutting stuff. So like, I feel like it's just, a lot of it's just like practice, like just doing it. Like I just compare my videos when I first started, the videos I do now, they're so much better. Like so, so much better. Uh, and I think like, it's just, uh, so it's not really like the approach is that much difference. It's just, uh, I try to do clean, crisp, bright, I think that really sells the food really nicely in the videos too. That's all super helpful. Thank, thanks so much uh, for for those tips. Uh, so let's you know, let's jump a bit more into your background. You're based in Southern California, in Orange County, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Are you have you been there a long time? Most of your life, all your life, recently? So for uh, like my actual background, uh, I was born in Chicago. Uh, we moved when I was like a baby. And we live, basically live in Southern California for my entire life. I was raised in Orange County. Uh, I went to uh, I went to uh, college in UC Berkeley, so I was in the Bay for a little bit, and so I'm kind of familiar with the Bay Palau scene as well, just because I was in Berkeley, Oakland, SF a lot. Uh, so I kind of know that area, like Fremont and stuff like that. And then I also, when I came back, I went to film school. And so I did like a little bit of film school stuff and I was in the film industry for a little bit, like as a camera operator, camera assistant. And then the photography kind of took over. Uh, I still kind of dabble in it, but uh, mostly photography now. But I, so I lived in LA for a while, like uh, Koreatown, the Valley, like North Hollywood area. And so uh, that's, so pretty much California has been my whole life, like just in California, either it's LA, Orange County, NorCal, you know, everything. But right now, currently, I'm in Orange County. Cool. So in your time, let's call it in, in Southern California, right? How have you seen the halal food scene, like, evolve? Oh, it's changed so much. My God. Like, I remember when I was a kid. Like, when I was, like, actually, when I was, when I first started, when I was a kid, like, we didn't really eat halal. Uh, my parents weren't, like, really strict about it. So I remember I'd going to, like, McDonald's, getting a Happy Meal in and out. And now it's like probably the one thing I miss, really. But then when my parents went to Hudge, when I was, uh, my parents went to Hudge when I was like in middle school, right? And so when we came back, they, things changed. My mom started wearing a hijab and uh, we started eating just strictly halal food. And so we, then we started only eating halal. So most of the time we eat at home because my mom would cook. We'd go like, you know, halal meat markets. And then, but, but for food wise, like restaurants and stuff, it was literally just like Indian, Pakistani kind of food places. Uh, kebab spots you know like persian food maybe and then like that one or two burger place it's kind of like a hole in the wall that's kind of like they're trying but it's like it's fine it's just not like up to par right but uh yeah it's no in and out burger yeah yeah it's it's not in and out right but it's it was fine and then like i don't even know if those places are even open anymore they might be long gone and so you and then since then it just slowly changed like all these things start popping up i think especially in the last like 10 years 
I would say like huge change, like all different types of food. Now you have like, uh, like Turkish food or like Persian food and not just like the ethnic food, like Asian food and stuff like that. Cause it used to be like one Asian place we used to always go to, uh, called Jamila gardens. It was in Irvine. And it was like every Indian or Muslim person would go there. And then also the non-Muslims would go there too. It was like the one halal Chinese place. Right. And now there's like so many different ones. Right. And there's also now like burger spots, barbecue spots, pizza places, Mexican food, all that stuff. It's so, it's just like blown up, especially in LA and Orange County. Like it's really like every single month I hear about a new halal spot opening in Orange County or a new thing. Like these places offer halal meat, you know, like maybe they're not like a, a Muslim like owned business, but they offer like halal meat or something or because they get their meat from like, you know, Australia or New Zealand or something. You're right. And so like just stuff like that just changes to like, you'll go to a restaurant like, oh, they're Creekstone. I can have a steak here. That's awesome. Like, or just like really nice, fancy restaurants. Like I'll talk about that later. Like some of the restaurants are like, but like some of these places, you go to these places and it's like, wow, these are like way nicer. It used to be like, it used to be very like that. I don't want to talk down on the ethics stuff like that. Cause like, you know, God bless them. And like, they're really pioneers in the whole food industry for Southern California. Like you go to like some of these places that don't even have an Instagram and stuff like that because they have like, you know, hardcore following old families uh, that visit them for years and years and years, right? And then you go there and they're like a little dated decor. The food's like solid, pretty good, but like they don't, it's nothing like going to blow your mind. And then, so it's like these were, and then now it's like just totally different where it's like these places are places that even non-Muslims would go to now, you know, because it's so, it's good enough. It's up to par. It's not just, it's not good just because it's halal. Like this is not good by halal standards. It's good by just in general food standards, you know, food, good food standards, you know, and decor and everything like that. So that's what I re I've really seen change. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's funny. We talk to, you know, other food bloggers in different cities and they feel the same thing. Something about the past 10 years, it's really blown up. Yeah, I, I think it's just like a huge amount of people coming from other countries. And then, you know, like, so a lot of, like uh, my, my parents came from India and, uh, a lot of us are like, we're first generation here in the United States. Right. And so a lot of people are getting older. They were kids when they were my, when they were my age, now they're getting older. Now they're owning business. Now they're starting stuff like that. And they're like, we want burgers. We want pizza. We want all this food, right. That we didn't really have as a kid. So they're making it. And then they're, they're kind of like, okay, I'm going to start a pizza place. I'm going to start a, you know, Mexican, uh, taco joint and, or a food truck. Like halal food truck, like it used to be just like those carts in New York, and now they're like actual halal food trucks that like, go to different places and stuff you can like visit. You know, it's just so that's really awesome to see. Yeah, agreed. Um, so on that note, we're talking about all this great food and these great food options. If I'm coming to SoCal, you know, either the OC or uh, in the near areas. What tell me like what are some of the spots? Say your you know ten spots that you think or ten ish spots that you think I should check out, and and what do you like about each one of these? Okay, so I'll try to do like the Southern California area, uh, Orange County, LA, kind of like that kind of area, and kind of the surrounding area, like for like that, just because I feel like there's some there up in LA area that are great, some in Orange County that are awesome too, uh, and I kind of go everywhere. Uh, so my first spot I like talked about would be Dave's Hot Chicken. So a lot of people know Dave's Hot Chicken, right? It's huge. Now it's like probably one of the biggest uh, kind of chains now. Halal food chains. I think it's one of the whole biggest chains that's growing in the United States right now. Uh, but I remember the first time I went to Dave's Hot Chicken. This was a long time ago. Not that long ago. But like they were one location, Hollywood. And uh, they just kind of opened their brick and mortar store. Huge lines. Like you have to check the Instagram to see how the lines are. It's like, oh, how long is the wait? Hour? hour and a half. Oh, it's like 15 minute wait. That's time to go. Right. So I went there. I was like, is this place really halal? It's called Dave's, you know, Dave's hot chicken. I'm like, I've never had hot chicken before in my life. I go there and I just, I try it. And I'm like, and I see the halal certificate and everything. And I'm like, I try it and it blows my mind. Like, I, it's like, I can't I'm like, wow, this is crazy good. And it's like so hot. There we do that, but it's so good. I was like, like really juicy and everything. And I, I know, like, everybody has their own favorite, like, chicken place, hot chicken place. My sister's favorite is, like, Bread's. It's like a food truck uh, that kind of goes around Orange County. Uh, but 
I will always stand for Dave's. Like, I still think the OG location in Hollywood, I've been there recently, still still great. So it's still, like, my spot. And I know, like, the fun thing is a lot of people, like, try the Reaper. You know, the we have to sign a waiver on your, like, uh, receipt. Because it's so hot, so people might, you know, because people are, like, you know, hacking into trash cans and stuff like that. Kind of crazy. But uh, it's it's definitely fun. I, I will always stand for especially the OG location. But that's, like, number one for me. Uh, I'm big on burgers. I love burgers. I make burgers myself, smash burgers or regular burgers too. Uh, and even when I was growing up a kid, I always wanted halal burgers. That's why we go to those like old like hole in the wall halal joints, right? And now I think my favorite, one of my favorite, at least one of my favorite burger spots is Urban Skillet. And uh, that used to be when I was in uh, North Hollywood area. I said Urban Skillet was like five minutes from my place. And so I'd go there. And back then, I think it was, it was more like a fusion kind of burger plate. But then now it's kind of more traditional. Uh, burger spots, stuff like that. And uh, I love, I just love Urban Skillet. They have a location also in Santa Monica now, too. Uh, really thick, juicy burgers. They know, uh, I mean, you really can't beat them. My favorite is like their barbecue brisket burger or like, uh, like a barbecue, I think it's a southern barbecue burger, too, which is like has like bacon and uh, onion rings. And I never was a big bacon guy. Like, I kind of didn't understand what's the big, like, why these. You know, non-Muslims like bacon, you know. And then I had it on a burger. I'm like, oh, I get it now. I get it. It's just, it's just, this, this, this makes sense. I get it now. I understand why they, they love this stuff, right? So, yeah, I say Urban Skill is like one of my favorite burger spots. And with the two locations, you can't really beat it. Okay, pizza. Pizza is my favorite food. Like, if I can eat one food for the rest of my life, it'd be like pizza, right? Because, uh, like, you just can't get sick of it. And there used to be, like, some halal pizza spots near me. They're not that great. But then uh, I went to Big Al's in Maywood. And Big Al's is uh, one of the flat of best pizzas in Southern California, halal or not. They have like incredible pizza, incredible wings. They have like a brisket sandwich, like sub, which is like really great. I always get like the, I think it's like a chicken cheeseburger pizza, which kind of tastes like a cheeseburger, but also like chicken pizza. I, I don't know. It's like really, really good. So they have a chicken cheeseburger pizza that I really like. Uh, it tastes kind of like a cheeseburger mixed with like chicken. And it's like my favorite pizza they have. But that brisket sub and any of the wings, really, any of the wings they have are awesome. And they now have a location in Orange in Orange County. So like a second location. So that's like, so that fact that it's like way closer to me now, I don't have to go all the way to Maywood. Maywood's a little far. So uh, that, that that really is. I even had it for like, a, we had like a little holiday party and I had a, them cater my holiday party because I, I love the pizza. So for like Mexican food, because we're in Southern California, right? We got to have, have some kind of Mexican food, right? And I can't choose. I just can't choose. I like these three spots kind of equally. Fatima's Grill, uh, which is kind of like a chain now. Or at least they're franchising now. And uh, Poppy Tacos, which also has a location in uh, Santa Ana, which is like by the closest wall taco spot to me. And then Cedar's Tacos, um, which is kind of like kind of right outside Cedar's Meat Market. And it's kind of like a pop-up. They kind of pop up at night. And for all these places, my go-to is the Bria tacos. You know? Bria, especially Bria quesa tacos, you know? Uh, just there's something about, like, you know, so, if you know Southern California food, Bria is, like, big. Like, everybody, like, is all about, like, those Bria, that, like, slow-cooked, shredded beef meat is, like, this next level. And so these guys, all three of them do great Bria. Every single one of them. I can't choose which one's my favorite of the three. Uh, so I so I'm saying all three of them for that one. Uh, lots of times I get a lot of messages about uh, what's good place to take people for like a birthday or something kind of fancy, you know. Uh, it's really kind of tricky to find like a nice halal fancy place. Uh, there's like some a lot of casual places, a lot of uh, places which are okay, but like maybe not the fanciest or something. You don't want to bring like a birthday party or you know like an anniversary dinner or something. Uh, but one place I been to very recently i really like it's called h and h steakhouse and it's a brazilian steakhouse and uh so that's just something that you don't get very often you know halal brilliant steakhouse and uh so what they do is they source their meat through like harris ranch and uh harris ranch uh has like a halal meat like i, I used to get like burger patties from them and stuff like that so that's where they get their their meat from and so like the beef is halal and everything. 
Uh, they do like serve alcohol. They do have like pork and stuff. I mean, it is kind of uh, like it kind of is not just for Muslims, but uh, there's no cross contamination. Uh, it's Brazilian steakhouse style. So a lot of like all you can eat kind of style and where you kind of they come to your table, they carve it, you know, carve the pecana or whatever meat it is. And you can kind of have as much as you want. It, it gives you a few sides. There's a salad bar. You can get stuff all the cart as well. I really liked it. It was really nice and fancy, kind of a little different than what I'm normally doing. Uh, and my favorite stuff from them is like the pecana, which is like a specific kind of like Brazilian style like steak. It's very unique. Uh, it's a little salty, but I, I, I really like it. And also they have like a filet mignon that I just really, really enjoyed. Uh, and it's like really nice inside. The decor is really great. They have a location in Beverly Hills. And they have a location in downtown. I've been to the one in Beverly Hills. Really nice service. Great people. Uh, so if you want something really fancy and it's good and it's for the most part, mostly halal menu, uh, HH Steakhouse is definitely someplace I would recommend. Thanks for joining us. Halal Run is the number one guide to halal eating options in the U.S., Canada, and the U.K. We feature over 17,000 listings in 2,500 cities on our website, halalrun.com. You can also find us on all our socials where we are at Halal Run. If you enjoyed today's episode, please make sure to subscribe so we can bring you more content just like this because we are here to serve you.